I'm Sara. And I'm Amu, and together we're the founders of Da Vinci Group, to whom it might not seem obvious, uh, we're partners in life as well as in business. Happy wife, happy life, <laughs> right? And who says you can't mix business with pleasure? Um, so let me start off with telling you a bit about what we do here in Da Vinci Group, right? So we use the tenets of neuroeducation and sensorial art platforms to deliver content for preschoolers. Now, you may be wondering, what has that got to do with the topic that we are here to talk about? Now, let me start with explaining what neuroeducation is. So, neuroeducation is a field of study under neuroscience. And what it tells us is, it's learning about how the brain optimally learns. So, what neuroeducation says is, if I were to engage your senses, and then if I were to introduce new idea or content, the brain biologically wires differently. All right, these are your neurons, your brain cells. They are wiring differently that will allow you to recall information faster, right? Now, the UK and the US have pumped in over a billion dollars to really understand how the brain biologically learns. And they have done MRI studies and found evidence to show that if I were to engage your senses, the brains connect differently, allowing us to create a longer lasting learning process. Now, Amu has got a clinical neuropsychology background, and I've got a neurobiology background. And what we did was we went one step further to really understand what some of these mediums are. And we have identified three main art platforms that allows your brain to be excited at a level where we are able to create that engagement to create a longer lasting learning process. That's my cue to change mic. And then I've got three devices. Can you manage? Would you Shall mind I click? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Is this better? <laughs> okay, great. Oh, I was about to shout and scream. Okay. So, yeah. So, what we do is we use clay, process drama, and jazz music as platforms to deliver content. Okay, so um, let's take clay for an example. How many of you have played with clay before? Awesome. How many of you have played with Play-Doh before? Okay, great, awesome. So now, the difference between clay and Play-Doh is clay has multiple textures to it. So for example, in 10 minutes, clay would become from wet, soft, squishy, and um, cold to drier, powdery, and harder. Whereas Play-Doh, right, in the 10 minutes, remains the same. So you start with soft, squishy, oily, and at the end of 10 minutes, you remain with soft, squishy, oily. So what happens in the brain when this happens is, right, for Play-Doh, the neurons fire rapidly initially because there's a new texture, and then it plateaus or levels out. With clay, on the other hand, right? Your brain gets really excited. It's like fireworks. So your neurons are firing rapidly and in constant bursts because the textures are continuously changing, all right? So when the brain is at this level and then when you pair content or some sort of concept, the wiring is very different in the brain, all right? The experience of creating is very different. Now, to the audience, okay? Um, if I were to ask you, what was the most challenging subject that you experienced in school, what would you say? Yeah, great, because I found that challenging as well. So, okay, so there I was in secondary school and seated at the back of my class, and my middle-aged uh, math teacher was rambling on about this triangle, which I had no clue about. Um, and I was wondering, why am I even here? And then I turn over and I see my friend doodling on a textbook. And then my mind sort of wanders to, hmm, what am I gonna have for dinner? Is chicken gonna be on the menu? And before I knew it, class was over and we were assigned our homework and I got nothing out of it. Now, here's the twist. If my math teacher had given us each a lump of clay before we started and then sort of said, okay, 
I'm going to teach you how to make, say, an ice cream bowl. And here's the twist, okay? I'm going to task you to decorate this pot with things that you learn from the lesson, all right? I, you can decorate it with maybe a triangle, an equation, or anything at all. I would have totally remembered this experience and the learning. So essentially, this piece of artwork becomes an extension of your understanding. And once it's fired, glazed, and upon becoming a functional piece of pottery, as you keep using it, um, it taps into the memories that you created during the learning process. Um, it's like, for example, looking at a photograph. Imagine 10 years ago um, when you were at a heightened emotional level at your wedding or your graduation and you come across it some years later uh, and you look at this snapshot. That snapshot can actually retrieve memories of a series of events that happened before and after. And that's the ability of the biology of learning. So which means in designing our programs, we were not just looking at the psychology of learning. We were also looking at the biology of learning. Now, this is the cool part, right? So Amu and I have been running this business for six years, and we made a very, very interesting observation. And that is, we saw a really stark contrast between conventional classroom learning versus our sensory-based and evidence-backed programs. So what we saw in the children in our classroom was that they were far more self-expressed, um, they were far more creative and exploratory in nature versus the typical classroom environment. Uh, we saw them grow, we saw them flourish, we saw them expand as tiny little human beings. And we saw this expressed in over 90% of the 12,000 children we have worked with in the last six years. And we got curious. So these are the children from our classrooms, okay, being so animated and alive. Um, so we got really curious, um, curious enough to bring the University of Helsinki from Finland on board to do a research collaboration with us. So this was to further support and confirm the findings that we have found in our classroom that um, such situation really allows for thriving. So Sarah and I braced the cold and the blizzards in Finland to make this happen. Um, the Brain Cognitive Research Institute of Helsinki is now embarking on a unique research project with us to study cortisol levels in hair samples of the children we are working with. So high levels of cortisol in indicates high levels of stress and vice versa. So this would be really, really exciting because it shows a correlation between reduced stress levels and our unique methodology, which we now call the NeuroEd method. So um, when we were in Finland, it was minus 42 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was not fun. And that's how curious we were, right? Now, in Da Vinci Group, we not only run programs for children, we actually run programs for adults as well. So given what we found, what was going on with kids, we decided to look at what's really going on with adults. So we wanted to find out how adults actually perceive thriving as. Now before doing that, let's see what this young man has to say about thriving. Hi. Wanna wave? Hello. Okay, great. So I want to ask you a question, Ronan. Yeah. Okay. Okay, when I say the word thrive, yeah. T H R I V E. Yeah. What are the first five words that come to your mind? Okay. Food. Food. Plant. Plant. Shirt. Shirt. Food. You said food already. Uh, umbrella. Umbrella, okay. Phone. Phone. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Dronan. Hi. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for contributing to my experiment. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> so that's our son. His name is Dronan, he's four and a half years old. So clearly, in his future, the phone definitely is part of thriving, right? Um, so let's just look at what the word thrive actually means, like definition-wise, right? Now, if you were to look at what's out here, some of the synonyms you will see would be flourish, prosper, grow, to succeed, and so on and so forth. Now, to me and Amu at least, right, the word thrive uh, means abundance. It means prosperity. It means really looking at something amazing and then thriving with it. It's a beautiful word. 
And we really wanted to know how this would impact with others, right? So we did a little experiment. Now, this is a disclaimer. It's, it's not an accurate um, population sample size or anything of the sort, but we decided to have some fun with it, right? So we went around asking people, what are the first five words that come to your mind when we say the word thrive, okay? So this is what some of the words that came up. We have bloom, prosperous, risk, achievement, encouragement, flourishing, struggling, abundance, and so on and so forth. And one key word stood out for 90% of the people was surviving. So it's really interesting to see how we may have collapsed thriving with, with surviving. We go into a state of surviving because of certain pressures or stresses that are usually external. So pressures like you know, family life, work, so on and so forth, that we may be at the effect of. Thriving, on the other hand, is really about freedom, self-expression, and abundance. So while this may have a real psychological implication to it, we cannot deny the biological basis of thriving. So through our programs, we strive to make a difference to create thriving individuals. So let's look at a scenario. Two people meet for the first time and then a beautiful friendship blossoms through that. Um, through this friendship, there is love, there's communication, there is growth, there's expansion, and many other aspects that you would attribute to thriving. Now, so let's break it down to the psychological basis and the biological basis. Psychology says that within the first 30 seconds of meeting someone, you would have made some prelim preliminary impressions that then form the basis for your future behavioral interactions, um, from which moving forward, you create memories. So from a biological perspective, there are a lot of things that's going on around and inside your body, right? We have neurotransmitters fighting with the neurons, we have dopamine, we have endorphins um, fighting through. And now what's really going on is, if you were to look at the neurons themselves, right, and with this interaction, a new neuronal pathway is being created. Now with more and more interaction, this neuronal pathway gets strengthened that ultimately leads to what we call a biological imprint. So it is not just the psychology part that works together, but there's a biology part that comes together as well to create what we are right now, a network of biological imprints. Now this is, hap this is happening when you're interacting as individuals, with peers, with groups, and ultimately how the society functions as well. Mm. So there is a real biological basis as to how a community thrives. Now if you were to look at a surviving community versus a thriving community, there is a real biological basis difference. And what we are saying is, the future is about how we're gonna crack this code. So, we decided to go back to the data that we have collected with the adults that we have worked with, with all the various programs we did. And this is what some of the facts look like. So we've done about 200 programs for adults. Um, we've engaged about 2,000 over adults through the course of this program. It's an inquiry facilitated um, program where the participants go through different topics and then they come in looking in various ways. <laughs> All right, and then we have an end state about them being really excited and alive. We're talking about a real state change, right? So what we are saying here is thriving is an actual paradigm shift. Now these participants who walk into our program, they come in looking disengaged, disinterested, excited, happy, whichever, whichever way, right? But ultimately what happens is when they touch clay, they seem to come alive. Mm. The state really changes, they smile a bit more, right? They interact a bit more. And before you know it, there's almost a festive-like atmosphere that's being created. They become jovial and they go on to actually create a greater cooperation amongst team members during the program. Now we also decided to do a post-program interview with these organizations that we worked with, mm. right? So we decided to go back to them and ask them, so what's been it, what, what has it been like? And a lot of them came back to us and said that there's been long-lasting impact with their team members with regards to how they have been interacting with one another. 
And some of the common words that showed up um, during the feedback session was like heightened awareness and engagement, greater creativity, and a lot more cooperation amongst their teams and their peers. So these were some of the findings that we had. So what our data suggests is that if we can couple our biological experiences with positive habits and actions um, that promote thriving, there are real practical implications to it. This can be achieved in many ways. Uh, what we've done right now is barely scratched the surface of this methodology. Um, large MNCs are now looking to marry their professional development programs with sensorial elements to tap into this biology. Neuroscience is making waves in the public sectors and the uh, corporate sector to focus on individuals, thinking creative individuals, so that they can create thriving organizations. There is evidence for the scientific basis of thriving. Evidence comes from research. A real change can be brought upon society when we focus on the biology of our behaviors. It may no longer just be a concept. A whole new applicative process can be invented to promote thriving. If we as a society can actually find a way to understand how these patterns work from a biological perspective as well, thriving will then be accessible to everybody. We will continue to show that we need to invest a lot more in understanding our biological patterns that lead to thriving. So as you have seen, there is a compelling need for us to really understand the biological basis of thriving. Now, there is a lot of work that needs to be done. This is not going to happen overnight. This is going to be one conversation at a time, one child at a time, one class at a time, one adult at a time, one workshop at a time. Now, the, the question, question that we, we would like to propose to you, to you is, is, how are, are you thriving? thriving? Thank you. Thank you.